everybody we're on the roof obviously so uh, i've got some parts that came in and i'm gonna wire these solar panels up i've got the cables that came in i'm just gonna make some but i found a good deal on these i used rv in my search engine instead of solar and then solar rv came up here's the combiner box i made and the cables are going to tie into that they're fused and i have a video on that combiner box so we're installing 400 watts this is actually a 600 watt system there's 100 watts and there's 100 watts this is going to drive the freezer and the laptop that i use to work remotely so uh can't do three things at once so we'll just uh, turn the camera off and i'll show you uh, progress how this project goes and i'm going to be just wiring them up going in the combiner box i'm not going to uh, put them in series just going to wire them up so here we go it keeps it easy red to red and black to black hey everybody so i've got some cables on the roof that don't reach or had contingency for that so these things are real easy these are the mc4 connectors if you can do a butt splice you can do these mc4 connectors and you can save a lot of money so the key to know this these things are waterproof connectors they come apart and when they come apart the part goes on here slides on it and then you have these two and the, which one's which you're like man which one's a positive and which one's a negative well, the negative is a short one. The positive is a long one. And then these are color coded. See the red? That's positive. There's no color code because black is negative. And that's it. So I've got the wire peeled back. And I'm going to put that butt splice, because it's a short one, into there and crimp it. And they make a special crimp tool for it. Meh. Just use these old steak on klein pliers everybody's got something like it and you can use those you'll save a lot of money all right i don't have three hands so i'm gonna go ahead and make a crimp well we're back on the roof so i want to show you what i use i use car automotive fuses they're in line and here's something important notice i got it labeled three and then there's two let me show you why move the camera too fast but you notice right there i got it labeled too so label one two three four you come back to the combiner box because if, if i ever have to troubleshoot these panels once i have all this wire covered up it's going to be pretty tough to troubleshoot so the wiring's a little messy right now i just got a wire nut on this ground wire i'll have all this covered up the roof and mastic tape like I did right here. So uh, next step, be working on the wire and making it look pretty. Well, I got the cables dressed up, so I know it's, it ain't pretty, but the uh, the roofing mastic covers that wire up. That's UV rated cable. I just don't want it in the sun regardless. So you can see how I've got it coming through here. Real ugly here, but it goes right to that combiner box. And then from the combiner box, down to the controller. Let me pan off a little bit. So that gives you a good idea. It's, uh, it's something you can do. I see a lot of people on Facebook and YouTube and other social media. Hey, uh, how much does it cost to install this? You need to do it yourself so and let me give you an example why you need to learn how to do this lesson learned here so when i put these panels in there's that junction box the combiner box that i put that online went downstairs and i went and looked at the controller to see how the voltage and the amper was doing took that fuse out put that fuse in and saw how that was doing then i did it again and again and then Put the fuse in, went down, put another one in, see how they both did together, then another one, see how all three did together, and then how all four did together. You can get a bad panel. And if you have an array of these, 
you'll never know. And 100 watts not working is a big deal. One thing that I saw, these two panels get more shade than these two panels. So my voltage is doing this a little bit. I don't mind that. That voltage is going to spike that battery and desulfate it. That's just a poor man's desulfate. That's what a wind turbine does. It pulses and hits that battery bank and keeps those plates clean. So uh, next scene, we're going to go downstairs and turn it on and uh, see how everything's doing. Appreciate you hanging out with me. I'm glad this is done. This is a project that I was dreading. I don't necessarily like getting on the roof. It's summertime and it's hot and this thing will scorch you. So uh, I'll just pan real quick. I got a storm coming and it looks like I got it all done just in time. Let's go downstairs. Well, we're downstairs, so I've got two charge controllers. This was the one hitting outside on the rain shields, covering, uh, leaning on the window. Let's see the amperage. 0.26. That's <clears throat> a little trickle charge, so it's all right. Every little bit helps. All right, green means it's on. I've already got the charging circuit going to this, as you can see, so let's see what we get. 2.1 amps. That's pretty good. There's no sun out there right now. And it's steady. That means it's getting even sun. And there we go. And steady, almost steady voltage hitting it. And we're back up. Got a little bit more sun out there. So just uh, to show you, that's coming from the roof, hitting the circuit breaker, coming down, hitting the disconnect, disconnect, going to the charge controller. This is the fuse block switch. I got these fuse boxes, fuse blocks that turns the fuse blocks off and on. That's the house circuits. This is my call the charging circuit. This goes down to the battery bank. I got a disconnect for it. This is the panels that's on the rain shields. And this is, it goes down to the battery bank too. I call it the charging circuit. So you can see, I don't know if you can see the little arrow there, but it's charging. We'll go back over here, 2.6. Well, um, I thought I was gonna wrap the video up, but I kept watching the charge controller and it kept jumping up and down in voltage, even when it wasn't getting shaded. So that tells me either I got a loose connection or the polarity is wrong from the panel. So a good way to troubleshoot that, I have this, this panel grounded. I have a negative and a positive and a ground. This, this is like three bucks at Harbor Freight. So all I gotta do is go to the negative bar here. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Let's go in the wire nut. All right, I'm gonna see if I can't do this. I'll go in the wire nut. See, all right. See if I can do it. See that light? That light is telling me that my polarity is right. A really bad way to check this is grab the wire and if it knocks crap out of you, that's the positive. So I went back and checked the charge controller. My voltage is steady now. My amperage is steady now, even with shading and with direct sun. So everything's e working like it's supposed to now. That's another reason I like having a combiner box. I can take the circuits out one by one and troubleshoot them. I checked the polarity using this voltage tester, 12 volt automotive. They're like three or four bucks. I keep them at every charge controller. It's just a good troubleshooting device. You can find a meter or bam you got a lot it's telling you your polarity drop so uh, i'm gonna wrap the video up and i'm, I'm hoping you learned something that's uh it's always something if you think it's gonna go smooth and uh i'm totally convinced that's why you need to do it yourself that way when things do go bad you will know how to fix it and if you're going to be off grid you need to know how to work on stuff so i appreciate you watching and uh take care and uh, god bless